Hi guys, I'm Bree. And I'm Allie, and this is Off Script. If you think about it, books are potential scripts for movies. When this adaptation happens, typically it's disappointing because they went off script. In this series, we will be talking about how off script they went. Hello! And welcome. I'm trying to think how Mrs. Doubtfire does it. Hello! What does she say after that? I have not watched that movie forever. So when she gets the pie in her face? <laughs> But well, she doesn't oh, get the pie in her face. She puts it. it. Yeah. yeah, so that she's not Robin Williams. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, welcome to Offscript. Is that what you said? <laughs> I said, and welcome <laughs> to Offscript, a podcast where we compare their book and the movie. Their book? Yeah, that's why I kind of was like, now I'm going to add an accent. Maybe no one will notice. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> Mess up. All the time. All the time. And it stays in. Yes. You're, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> this is our friend Justin. He's our guest star today. Human said our co-host. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Allie's replacing me. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Thank you for having me on the show. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> yes. We did a whole sort of get to know you. With Justin on a mini a couple of weeks ago. But for real quick, for our listeners who don't listen to our mini but like, why? How do we know each other? Uh, friends, we are... Um... <laughs> <laughs> We're not friends. I don't know what he's talking I'm not friends with this loser. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe acquaintances. <laughs> Wish we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're friends. We've been friends. Oh, wait. <laughs> what? I'm Bree. Oh, and I'm Allie. And that's Justin. I'm Justin. <laughs> <laughs> we're so good at this. How do we Prof- have professionals? How do we have people keep coming back to us? <laughs> I don't even know. I feel like it gets worse and worse, too. <laughs> oh, 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 we didn't say this in the mini said We are back with our friends Roscoe and Aspen and the Giddy Gats. So if you hear any uh, glitter clatter, we got some fur friends with us. But anyways, and not so furry fur friends. Oh, yeah. A little bald kitty. How dare you? Ziggy's right there. <laughs> he can hear you. I thought you were referring to me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. But anyways, okay, so today we are going to talk about Roscoe. Aragon. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Get so- back. I really Move. want to lay up there with you. Move. Get back. <laughs> Can you sit? Okay. So today we are doing Aragon. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, you were our first ever uh, guest we even thought about. Not only our having, but we were like, we should invite Justin and we should do Aragon with him because we knew you liked this story. I do. Thank you very much for uh, considering me. You're welcome. <laughs> Aren't you just so glad? <laughs> <laughs> I I couldn't think of anything else I'd rather be doing on a Saturday night. <laughs> my, my favorite part about this is <laughs> we keep like, oh, do you want to be a guest star? And then I only just until you were powering through with us realized that not only are we like, come be a guest star, but we're like, okay, you're going to have to read this book and watch this movie. Like, we're giving our guest stars homework. Like, and we're like, oh, shoot. Like, that. I realized, I was like, oh, that's not very nice. <laughs> well, they could say no. You could have said no. It's also the quickest I think I've ever read a 500 page book <laughs> in my life. I know. I was impressed. Oh, I was super <laughs> impressed <laughs> when you were like, "Okay, I just started." I was like, "Oh, no way, he's not." Gonna, as I also just started, <laughs> I was texting Bray. I was like, "Maybe we should push it back." 
But it was also because I was also behind. I felt like so I was like, oh, we can push it back a week. Let's do that. He's like, now nah, we got this. I'm like, oh, OK, I on Friday, Thursday. Yeah, you sent a message. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to. But then I looked at our calendar and I was like, oh, mother, we cannot. There's like no way. I was like, if we did that, me and Allie would have to record a mini set on this day. And then we would also have to read this book and watch this movie by this day. And we can't do that. <laughs> I like sat there and I was like, okay, so then when would we reschedule this one? And I was just like, yeah, there was no way I could have rescheduled this. So it was today or never. <laughs> I saw your message and I went to go uh, read it. And then I noticed that it was gone. And I was just like, oh, somebody changed their mind. <laughs> I guess I got to keep powering through. We can do this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But we did. We did it. We did. It was it was a lot of fun. I legit finished the book this morning. Same. But <laughs> <laughs> we did it. I finished the book this morning. I woke up at uh, eight o'clock this morning <laughs> and started reading <laughs> and finished by like, I want to say like 10. There you go. I finished. I finished. Uh, I had. Wait, hold on. Oh, she's going to fact check you. Fact check you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that's right, because I texted you. You texted me, yeah. 10.25. Okay, I was right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I had, when I woke up this morning, I was on page 444. Whoa, you had like... (laughs) I still had like... 50 some odd pages. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) But you did it! I did, I did. Powered through it. (laughs) I thankfully only had 30 pages left this morning. (laughs) I had it done... But I also listened to it and I, yeah, (laughs) I was doing a bunch of other stuff all week long and just had it playing constantly. But it was like very stressful. I'm not even going to lie. I did not think I was going to make it. So I know Allie like a week before was like, I think we need to push. And I was like, girl, I don't think we can. I was, I was so stressed. Like I I was like, oh my God. I was panicking because I was, uh reading mostly on my lunch breaks and then I was also reading after work Mm -hmm. (laughs) and uh that was like the only time during the day and then like you know Brie was like talking to me about like oh I'm getting a bunch of reading at work or I'm reading I'm like I'm like she gets such a head start to me (laughs) and I'm like I am not gonna make it oh my gosh Uh. No, you like got ahead of me for a while, too, though. I did. You're right in between us. And I was like, damn, he's such because there's like I always feel like I'm a fast reader, but I think a chapter or 30 pages takes me about an hour to read. Yeah. So then if you multiply that by 500, that's like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because I was averaging. I want to say uh, like the most I wound up reading on was like uh, like in the span of an hour as I read about forty two pages uh, in an hour on my Damn. lunch break. Damn. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, more than faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why audiobook people. <laughs> <laughs> we would not be here today if it was not for wonderful audiobooks. And there is nothing wrong with audiobooks. <laughs> I actually considered doing it because I'm like I don't think I can read this fast enough. <laughs> All right. Well, that was pretty much our picture. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's get started, shall we? Are we ready? Yes. I really hope you screw this up so Justin can see how bad you do. Hey. Oh, good. Hey. <laughs> I like 90% of the time mess up the synopsis. So <laughs> now I feel pressure. Pressure. <laughs> a farm boy happens upon a dragon's egg, a discovery that leads him on a presidented. <laughs> what? I messed up because you laughed at me before I even said the word. Uh, I was laughing because of how you said it. You were so like, I was like, she was in the zone and you like got her out of it. Uh, A predestined journey where he realizes he's the one person who can defend his home against an evil king. Okay. Good job. Good job. I would like this to be on the record that Bree screwed me up. It was not my fault. You say that every time. <laughs> well, this time it was real and y'all heard it. <laughs> this time it was real. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Our author is Christopher P- 
Paolini? Paolini? Paol... I should know this. I'm, it's Italian. Do you know how to say Paolini. Paolini. She's also really bad at saying people's names. I'm actually not entirely sure. Uh, oh, okay. I think it's Paolini. 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 Okay. Okay. Director Stephen Fangmeyer. <laughs> Meyer? Meyer? Yeah, so. probably Meyer, huh? Mm-hmm. Screenplay writer Peter Butchman. That's kind of a cool name. <laughs> oh, Butchman. Audiobook reader Gerald Doyle. I didn't like him. Gerard or Gerald? What did I say? You said Gerald. Oh. It looks like it's Gerard. <laughs> I was like, maybe she mistyped that and knew him from... I mean, I very well could have mistyped it, um, but I don't have it with me, so I don't yeah, know. Okay. <laughs> I think I copy and pasted that, actually, so probably not. <laughs> no, he wasn't. I don't know. Okay. No, don't suggest. He read uh, Aragorn super whiny. Is, did you guys mm. read him as Aragorn? whiny? It's going to be Aragorn through this whole time thing, you guys. Sorry. <laughs> is, he, is he whiny? Did you guys read him whiny? No. No. Okay. Yeah. I no. No. I was like, this is not, this is not fun to listen to. I hate whining. Why? I when I was a fourth grade teacher, my kids came up to my desk whining. I said, go back and talk to me with like when you could talk like a fourth grader. <laughs> I was a mean teacher. I could not stand whining. Oh my gosh. Anyways, so that wasn't very. Yeah, you enjoyable. got kids. You can't really uh, deal with whining. No. Gosh, <laughs> get away from me. Anyways, <laughs> so the book came out in 2002. The movie came out December 15th, 2006. That is a four year difference. So which first, Justin, which did you read or watch first? Uh, I read the book first. I originally read the book. Um, gosh, was I in middle school? I think it was middle school. But I did read the book first. Okay, I read it first. I watched first. Ooh, let's see our theory. Do you know our theory? I explained it. Okay. She yeah. did explain it. Yeah. Okay. All right. And our initial thoughts with the story, the plot overall, not the comparing, not how well it did, but just like, do you like the story? Yes. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, th uh, I enjoyed the fantasy aspect of the story. Um, I really got, got really, really into the book. Um, and actually, I really like the, the series in general. I it was a slow start for me, but it did pick up. I I did enjoy the fantasy. I was I think I was expecting more fantasy, like like the last <laughs> the last uh, big battle yeah. scene at the end. That's kind of how I thought the whole book was going to be. Hmm. So going into it where most of it is traveling was harder to read. But um, I didn't hate it. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Do oh, I do have a question. Sorry to sure. interrupt you. Do the other books are they faster paced? Um, not always. No. Oh, okay. Um, okay. They okay. are very similar paced. Actually, uh, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> yes. Because so I'm on the same page as Allie, where it was a bit too slow for me. Up until literally the. 30 pages I read this morning and I was like, oh, my God, where was this, this whole time? Uh, and so I kind of thought that the rest of the series would pick up. But if it doesn't, I don't maybe I'll just ask you all my questions that I have. But the, <laughs> the one that was burning me, I already asked and my answer was correct. Or, well, I guessed correctly is what I'm saying. <laughs> what was it? I want to know. I thought that. Who do you think Brahm is in relation to anyone? Oh, I read a fun fact. I already read oh, it. Sorry. That he's Aragon's dad. Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> right away, I was like, but I knew that I would have to read the other books to figure it you out. You have to read the third book. <laughs> the, yeah, okay, so I did read that. It's just been a long time since I read it. <laughs> Justin has some good fun facts for us. Oh, uh, I'm excited. Um, oh, gosh. I just hope it's not one of your fun facts already. Oh, that's okay. Uh... There's a, I think it starts in the second book. You actually get to follow what happens to his cousin. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, and as far as like the pace is concerned, it, it, 
it really slows down whenever it's about his cousin because his cousin can't do magic. His cousin can only oh. do like. Oh, yeah. And so, like, and it's happening in the middle of, like, Aragon's training. Oh, so it kind and of so bounces? There's, I was always, like, I always dreaded when it went back to his cousin <laughs> because it was just like, you are a boring fuck. I don't oh, want no. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'm done with you. I want to be, but go away. I'm so tired of you. Do they bring, obviously, I know that Braum is dead, but, like, does his character come back? Do we get flashbacks with him? No, um, I think you do get some like information yeah. like here and there about him, but I don't want to read the rest. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want a spoiler? Yes. Murtaugh is a traitor. <gasps> no! no! He becomes a dragon rider. <gasps> but an evil one. But he goes to Galvatorx and he steals <sighs> the sword from Aragorn. <sighs> Because it's rightfully his. I kind of had a feeling that part was coming, but I thought he was going to be a good guy this whole time. <sighs> nope. Damn. Yep. Well. Right? That's but <laughs> there is a... Uh, the elf that winds up training Aragorn is also a dragon rider. Oh, cool. And so there is another one, and he actually becomes, like, more... He gets more elf features. Mm-hmm. Oh. As he, like... Oh. Yeah, it's kind of weird. He starts, like, developing, like, pointed ears and stuff like that. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. I and like he gets, that. like, really intense with the magic and stuff like that. It's it, There's a lot of cool things that happen. Oh, that's Ooh. cool. Yeah. Okay. I, they killed off my character, so. <laughs> <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> Literally, first book. How <laughs> you yes, do that? they did. <laughs> I was trying to read it. I couldn't see. Why did you pick this book, Re? <laughs> Why didn't it sound like you just called me Re, like the guy from my work the other day? <laughs> Maybe I did. Uh, I picked this one because I knew it was one that Justin was excited about. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. and I wanted him to be our first uh, guest on the podcast, and I thought the second season was a good way to do that. Yep. Very cool. I like it. <laughs> Rather than us first season not knowing what the fuck we're doing, be like, come join us. <laughs> you hey, had, we're not sure what we're doing. You should come do this. <laughs> you would have had a very different experience. I'll tell you. I mean, if you think this is crazy, you had to be there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. His fun fact you already got. Oh well, then I'll let him. Let me know which one it is, and I'll let four. You just, number four. Okay. okay. Oh, right. So I have some Alley Super Fun Facts. Brie makes it all fun sounds. Did you like that I left it? Yeah. Yes. And she go. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So my first fun fact. This was the last major film to be released on VHS in the United States. And then no more VHSs ever. Was it really? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Kind of a crappy one to end on. That really sucks. <laughs> so, Sir Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart were offered the roles of Brom, but they turned it down because they were working on X-Men. Oh, I'm glad. That would have been great. I <laughs> love my guy. Why can't I think of his name, goddammit? Jeremy Irons? Thank you, yes. <laughs> I was just going to say Scar, but... I know, I think they would have done well. Yeah, I think they would have done it. It would have been a good job. And then Elijah Wood and Shia LaBeouf were considered for the roles of Aragon. That would have been a whole, like, I think Lord Elijah of the Rings. Would have been great. I yeah. was actually considering that, like, uh, trying to think if if um, I want somebody else to play Aragon. I was like, Elijah Wood would have done a good job, I think. I really like What if I they picked. had Elijah Wood and Ian McKellen? <laughs> like, that would have been great. <laughs> I mean, I think it would have... I think it would have bombed a little bit more because then people would have gone in expecting Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. So oh, I, I really true. think they can That's the only do downside. That. Yeah, exactly. Actually, that's a fun fact I didn't put in there. Uh, the author has plagued. He has, it's plagued because he went through a battle of uh, copyrights because people accused him of stealing oh, oh. Lord of the Rings information. Like, I heard about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember hearing about that. <sighs> Which I mean, like, I mean, I guess the long journey. But I didn't get oh my any God. Lord of the Rings if feel. This is how reading Lord of the Rings is gonna be. <laughs> Lord of the Rings is. Uh, I've tried to read it. 
and I couldn't even get through the first like three pages. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and you're just gonna put it off and off and off. The yeah. Hobbit was definitely yeah. a better book. Oh, I love, the Hobbit. I love the Hobbit. The Hobbit is a fantastic. fantastic book. Yeah, but Lord um, of the Rings. Lord of the Rings was. Uh, I borrowed that book from my friend in sixth grade for like two years. <laughs> and I every time I picked it up, I'd be like, OK, I guess I got to restart because I don't remember shit that I just read. <laughs> and I again would like get halfway through the first page and be like, oh, my God, what am I trying to do to myself? I can barely get through those movies. <gasps> what? I mean, get out. same. I'm kicking you off the podcast. The first, get out. Get out. <laughs> I like the third movie, one. The, the first second movie and the third one are so better. Boring. The first one's horrible. The yeah. first one the is first so Lord boring. of the Rings yeah. is so boring. That's my favorite one. Get it's, out of here. It's so boring. My, those are my favorite movies. And y'all are okay. Okay. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Plans were made to adapt the other three books into the series, or the other three books in the series, w uh, with the same director, intending to film the second and third movie back to back. But after horrible reviews, and the second one was, the second one was actually filmed. A select few audience got to watch it. Oh. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. But there were horrible reviews, so it was dropped. The film was under it underperformed, but it still made um, 250 million with a million dollar budget, which isn't horrible, but they were expecting a lot more. I can understand them expecting a lot more because of the uh, the I mean, I knew a lot of people personally that were big fans of the series mm -hmm. and um, myself included was super excited to see the film <laughs> and then just seeing it, it was just like kind of just a huge disappointment <laughs> uh well also our friend from D, D said that the author was pissed and the author took back the rights and said you cannot make my books into movies and justin said that they then pulled the movie from theaters early wow yeah which is probably also why he had underperformed yeah <laughs> so like it was basically, you pissed off the author. <laughs> like, Seriously. Well, why? There was so much wrong. Why wouldn't he be pissed? Mm -hmm. Speaking of the author, he wanted to be, have a cameo in the movie, but he was doing a, a book tour, so he wasn't able to. I bet he's so happy he did not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he would be even more pissed. Which actually makes sense. Like, he wasn't on set, so he probably couldn't. Oh, oh he didn't opinion. really have much of a say. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. Oh, I bet he regrets that. Oh, gosh. I'm sure he does. Uh huh. He's like, if I didn't do this book tour, I could have been on set and I like, could have ripped you all a new one. I wonder if that's why they're turning into a TV series. <gasps> mm -hmm. I didn't know they were. Yeah, that was announced uh, August of last year. I think it was. Apparently, we're going to end up doing this again, Ellie. <laughs> we just might. It might be a mini. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, these episodes were good. These ones were not. <laughs> All right. They need to keep from. Okay. But well, they probably the won't. <laughs> <laughs> they probably won't. <laughs> but Brie, if they keep from, then you know what happens, right? <laughs> They're going off script. Oh. oh. Hey, and then we can talk about it even more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are we ready to start? Yes. Okay. So the book kicks off. There's a battle going on. All the creatures are attacking this elf, and then a man comes in, and he's in the fight, too, and an elf held on to a gi giant sapphire stone, and it's like, just blows up with excitement is how the book starts. That's how the movie starts. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's mm -hmm. pretty close. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so then we jump to Aragon. Aragorn. Aragon. <laughs> I'm getting Lord of the Rings mixed in here. <laughs> Allie's like, Bree's never going to schedule it. I'm going to talk about it in this one. <laughs> Cameo appearance of Lord of the Rings in Aragon. <laughs> he went hunting in the spine, which is like the forbidden forest. It's the woods. It's spooky. <laughs> now you're throwing a Harry Potter. <laughs> Someone had to. <laughs> yes. And he found this sapphire stone and he decided to take it back home with him. I mean, that happens. Yeah. That's pretty much how it happens. Yeah. In, in, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. 
Okay, but this stone was huge in the movie. Did you expect it to be that big? I honestly did not <laughs> when I read it, but I mean... Seeing it before reading it, yes, because I was like, oh, that's probably where the dragon is. And a dragon's pretty big. I legit in my head had it like more Harry Potter, the sorceress stone. Like I even had it like that same shape, except it was blue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that big, like the size of your hand. The size of a normal like, rock. <laughs> the baby dragon's an ant. <laughs> Little, hey. <laughs> All right. Think of think, think of uh, Hagrid and oh, Norbert. Norbert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a huge egg. <laughs> it was pretty big. Well, at this point, I didn't know it was the egg. I mean, I had a guessed, but you didn't know you. It was described as a stone, and the thing in the movie looked like those things that you put in water. And, like, out comes, like, one of those, like, sponge... Dinosaurs? Dinosaurs. Yes. Is that what it looked like? That's what it looked like to me. (laughs) kind of did. All right. It looked like a big jelly bean to me. Yes, it did. Delicious. All right, so Aragorn went to the butcher, and he tried to sell the stone for some food. And Sloane is the butcher, and he's pissed. He's like, oh, you found that in the spine. Get it out of here. It's full. It's magic, and we don't mess with that. Get it out. And this guy named Horst comes, and... He stood up to Sloan and he bought Aragorn some food and I did it again. You did. <laughs> Gosh. And um, Aragorn agreed to work in the Smith shop to pay off the food. And he went home and his uncle agreed to help sell the stone when the traders come into town. So the horse thing doesn't happen in the movie. Like the horse is there, but he doesn't pay for uh God, you're going to get me to say it. Aragon to get food. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I know what you were trying to get at. Horse, the horse doesn't, <laughs> um, uh, uh, doesn't agree to try. It doesn't purchase food for Aragon. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. So then Aragon doesn't need to go and work. Yeah. They tried to sell the stone when the traders came in, but this trader who's like, all knowing of all gems and pretty things is like, um, no, I'm not going to take it because I don't know how much it's worth because I've never seen a stone like this before. And it's hollow, but it's super strong. And um, he was also warning them that Urgles are passing through town and they're like, oh, no, you know, we, they won't come here. Blah, 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 blah. And then people just sat around the fire and they listened to it was Brahm, right? Telling stories about dragons and battles and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. In the movie, it's like around a campfire and Brom like, I, I don't know. I feel like in the movie, they're trying to kind of make him seem like the like old naysayer, like, ah, crazy guys talking about shit. No one believes. It, it doesn't. It, the movie definitely, it, it seems more like it's uh, just the village crazy yes homeless, exactly homeless guy that exactly. doesn't really yeah that's yeah. just kind of mumbling <laughs> like, about it, things to himself that you know nobody's really paying attention yes. to him that's yep <laughs> and didn't the guards like get pissed yeah in the mm-hmm. movie the guards get like super angry with him and like steal his food and <laughs> yeah i know i was like damn this poor homeless <laughs> <laughs> and then i was like how dare you treat scar like that <laughs> Okay, Aragon was playing with the stone, and it starts, like, making the squeaking sound, and then it cracks open. It cracks open, and out pops a dragon! And he, like, touched her. Was it, did he touch her, and the silver mark came? How did the silver mark come? He In the, the book? Mark. Yeah, that's a question for him. In the book, I want to say it was, uh, he touched her, and that's then the I, silver mark appeared. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. So, Aragon was playing with. I said it right, right? Aragon yes, was playing did. with <laughs> the stone and it started squeaking. And then all of a sudden it cracked and out came a dragon. And he touched the dragon and a silver mark appeared on his hand. The mark's not silver and it's a little swirly cue on like the fat of his hand, not the palm. It's like on his thumb almost. <laughs> yeah. It, it just kind of looks like a, a bad scar, <laughs> like he touched a stove. 
Get it? A bad scar. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So then we go into details about how the dragon is growing super fast and he's. Oh, do you have more? Well, what I want to say is I feel like in the movie, too, I feel like the shade gets introduced way sooner and gets like shown almost any time any of the bad guys are shown. Whereas in the book, he shows up like three quarters of the way through the book. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> I guess it's also that we get all the behind the scenes in the movie mm -hmm. from the bad guys, whereas we're all, we don't get that in the book. So I get why he showed up early. Because, I mean, he's been around the whole time in the book, but yeah, it's not matching. As someone who watched it first reading it, I was like, well, this guy is like the guy that they've been chasing this whole time or that's been chasing them this whole time. Where is he? Mm. So then when I finally got to him, I was like, wow, this dude has not been caring about <laughs> this kid. It seems like in the movie, um, the shade is more hunting them. And whereas the book, it seems like it's more the other way around. It wasn't about the shade first. It was about Aragorn trying to get revenge against the Razak. Yes. Yeah, that totally makes sense. OK. So then we have details about the dragon and she's growing super fast or it's growing fast. We don't know what it is yet. And uh, it's out in the trees and Aragon decided to keep it a secret because uh, he figured it might be dangerous or he knows it'll be dangerous if the wrong people find out. And um, about a month into having this dragon, he hears it say Aragon in his head. So like now he's like, talking in its head with this dragon. <laughs> you said that so beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> Perfection. Uh, that kind of happens, except for I do feel like, uh, obviously in the movie, it's way difficult to portray them just talking to each other in their consciousness. And so in, in the movie, I feel like it was kind of cheesy how it was done. I feel like they could have did it a little bit better. I also, I, I love Rachel. I can't remember whites. She's in the mummy. Oh, is her last name wise? I think so. Yeah. Kay. Wise. I love her. She's one of my favorites, but I, I do not like how she acted this character at all. I didn't realize that was her. Mm hmm. Yeah. And she sounds too like, High and mighty, and so Hoity I just toity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was yeah. like, that's not how this dragon's supposed to sound, especially when it's a cute little baby. Like, what? Well, one thing that I noticed in the movie was like that I didn't like was the fact that the the dragon announces its name yeah. to Aragorn and is like, "Oh, this is I... my name," and I'm like. That was a whole thing, though. Of like one the of my naming process. Favorite things about the freaking book that I'm bringing up now because I'm so mad now that you brought it up. I love that Saphira was Brahm's dragon snake. Yes. Sorry, now I'm having like having a moment, emotional moment here. But yeah, so like, I loved the scene where he went to Brahm and was like. What are some dragon names? Like, you know, like nonchalantly. And Brom's like, well, there's this and this and this. And he's like, mm, maybe a girl's name. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't know it's a girl yet. He just then throws out Saphira. Yeah, he just starts throwing the names mm -hmm. out to the dragon and the dragon's mm -hmm. like shooting them all down. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, oh, duh, you're a girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, oh, Saphira might work for you. And then, yeah, so I agree. I also don't like that. That was literally what I was going to talk about next. So you're welcome. You're yep. Yeah. Did that happen <laughs> in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> it did not. <laughs> okay. So then we go on to D. Nope. <laughs> Gotta scroll down. Just, <laughs> jumped, or, just jumped read a little, a, a little ahead. <laughs> so we get introduced, or maybe not introduced, but Roran. Is that how you say his name? Roran. That's how I. Said That's it. how I said it. Okay. Uh, his cousin let him know he's going to go marry a girl and 
he's leaving the farm and um Aragorn is just not happy. Aragorn. Dang nabbit, you guys. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You know why? Because when I was doing my audio notes, because I r- listen to the book and after every chapter I do my audio notes and I just kept saying Aragorn. So I like noticed it when I went and typed them up. I was like, it says Aragorn, Aragorn, Aragorn. So I'm going to say it this whole time because that's how I said it for 16 hours into my phone while taking notes on this book. So. Sorry. <laughs> the title of the book. like. <laughs> What's even better is you sat there as you're taking your notes. You just finished hearing how the person reading it says it. Well, I had like an accent, so it kind of sounded like that. (laughs) Aragon was not happy and he's venting to his dragon. And he, oh, this is when he realized he needs to name it. And he discovers that she's a girl and names her Safira. And that didn't happen. You guys talked about that. Well, the, the cousin thing did that happen oh thank you go for it uh his cousin in the movie um was running off to join the military yeah yeah i was kind of my note is there's no katrina (laughs) yeah there's that that's a very good no because katrina's not even his love interest is non-existent in the movie like he's like i'm gonna go run off and join the military because i'm at that age i literally (laughs) when i got to this part of the book i sat there and i was like did I miss uh, reading this book after watching the movie? A lot of what I read, I sat there and I was like, I obviously missed that in the movie. That did that happen in the movie? But I was like, no, you didn't miss it. This is just what they screwed up with. OK, so then we get to details about how Safira is getting very smart and she can now communicate with Aragon. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to pause every time you guys. And they could communicate in their minds super easily. And Aragon's so sad because his cousin's leaving. Kind of talked about that already. I'll yeah. keep I'll keep going. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Horst let Aragon know that he needed to get rid of the stone. Because these men in black cloaks are coming in and looking for it. So on his way home, he ran into Brom and he sneakily pulled his glove off. And because uh, Aragon had Aragon had <laughs> gloves on and to hide his mark and Brom pulled it off and he saw the mark and he just walks away all whistling so happily. And oh, I also have a note that uh, in the movie, there's a whole entire scene with Rorin where they're sparring that does not happen in the book mm-hmm. or in the movie. <laughs> and oh, wait, no, but no, you were right. <laughs> you're right. Does not happen in the uh, book. It does not happen in the book. And I feel like that's very important for later conversations in the book. Did what I said happen? Uh, sorry, I was focused on that. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Brom getting his seeing his hand and all that. Oh. Mm, no. It did. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Professionals>. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Did he walk away happily, though? I don't remember if he walked away happily. I don't think he walked away happily, if I remember correctly. It's because you're the one that watched it today. <laughs> I am, but I also, like, walked away because I was making food and kept getting mad at the movie. <laughs> Fair. We do that, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so the men were on his way to his house. He heard this from, I think, Sloan. He heard it from. And so he like he overheard and uh, he went to tell his uncle. But Safira found him first or he found her first and he told Safira and she basically like threw him on her back and like flew off. And he's like in pain. Her spine or her uh, scales are like cutting up his legs and all this sort of stuff. And. He couldn't ride back because he was in so much pain and she wouldn't let him. So they stayed the night in the spine. So Aragon does find out about the men looking for his house. But the whole thing with Sephira does not happen. Yeah, like she grabs him and they fly away. But that's it's kind of like this whole like awkward. He's like falling this entire time like can't really keep it reminded me of uh the 
hippogriff flying scene in the third Harry Potter. Hmm. I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, like it's like this whole awkward. He's like mm-hmm. trying not to. He's trying to hang on for dear life. And I was just like, aren't your legs supposed to get all like cut up and you're supposed to get hurt? Which didn't Plus, happen. Like, to me, I feel like being a dragon rider. Yeah, even though you like get chosen and you do have to train. I also feel like there's supposed to be this innate like. I know how to do it. <laughs> this is not the case. Side note of something that I noticed watching the movie today is uncle. They didn't give him a name. In the movie. <laughs> yeah. his, his name in the movie was just uncle. When, when you texted us that, I was like, Oh, that makes so much sense. Cause every time in the book, when I would read Garrow, I was like, who in the hell is this dude? <laughs> <laughs> Until he died. And then I was like, oh, that's his uncle. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, they wake up the next day and uh, he convinced her that they have to go back to town. Like these people are after his house and his uncle is there and like it's just dangerous. So they fly back. And this whole farm is burnt to the ground. And his uncle is found under, like, rubble, a pillar, and, like, they dig him out. He's barely hanging on. Um, But they... Safira's still little, so she can't fly them. She's not little, little, but she's she's not big. And so she can't fly both of them very far. So she... But she goes as far as she can to get to the healer. And... Aragon has to drag her the rest of the way and he passes out because his legs are all tore up and he's losing blood and all this sort of stuff. And yeah, but then he wakes up and he's in the healer's house. This does not happen in the movie. And the uncle is dead when they get to him. Brom comes and it's like, we need to burn him. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) I know. I was like watching that. I was like, he just died. And he's like, here, here's a a funeral for a king. And he just throws fire on him. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Um, Okay. So. So then none of this happens. So I'm just going to keep going because they do not go to the healer. So it turns out it's been he had been out for four days and they went to go, he went to go check on his uncle and he's not doing well. Horst is there and asks for information about what the heck is happening because we, uh, see dragon foot, not dragon beast footprints everywhere. And Aragon lied and was like, Oh, I don't know. And, uh, Aragon's been trying to get in contact with her through his telepathy, <laughs> telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but he couldn't. And then all of a sudden he could because she was hunting. He was she was far away. But so oops, so she's <laughs> there in contact. And then next chapter is like. Two paragraphs that his uncle died. His uncle dies in the movie. Yeah, that's about the only thing that was, <laughs> <laughs> was right about this entire scene. It was also in the snow and it was like summertime in the movie, right? It, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So Safira tells him that they need to leave or they're going to be found out. And plus, let's go get revenge. And he's like, "Okay, let's do it. And so he starts gathering up the materials. um, But then there's Brom and he stops him. And uh, Aragon notices that he's communicating with Safira, too. And. They go to like a little quiet location and Brom gives him a sword and from a past rider that he had. And uh, Aragon learns more about dragons. <laughs> I spelled Brom wrong. Brom also <laughs> knows that the guys who attacked are called Razax. Ra- How did you guys say it? Razax? Razax. Razax. In the movie, this is basically when we find out that Brom was a rider. <laughs> Pretty much um, the movie, they, uh, gosh, they, they jump the gun. <laughs> They're just like, yeah. hey, here's some horses. We're going to the Varden. Yeah, yeah. No, I <laughs> when I was watching the movie, a lot of 
a lot of the action scenes that happen, I would sit there and I'd be watching it and I'd be like, wait, what led us to get to this city? Or like, what led us to get to this? And then I was like, when I read the book, I'll understand. But then it almost confused me even more because then I was like, wait, when did that happen? And when did this happen? And why did that happen? So, yeah, I feel like I'm just all jumbled with this one. So they all start working together and they build a saddle for Safira. They also plan to get a few horses. They practice fighting with sticks. Uh, they got to the town and they bought their horses. And um, Rom, like, has a lot of money. Like, he's rolling. And it's, uh, I was, and th- because he steals money. <laughs> I was very <laughs> impressed with him. <laughs> He's like walking across the bridge and the guy's like ripping him off for a toll and uh, he pays the toll and then he steals all the money plus some. So that was cool. Yeah. And um, Aragon can also sort of communicate with his horse, not like talking back and forth, but he I don't know. I was kind of confused, but he like can communicate with it somehow like its feelings. Kind of like how I took it was he can talk to it. And it won't totally understand exactly what he's saying, but it'll get the gist of like, oh, he's a kind person and this is what he wants me to do. It's kind of like how animals can tell how people are like Mm -hmm. based on your emotional state. Uh, Yeah. But it was more like a mental mental telepathy, telepathic level. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's cool. (laughs) Okay. So now they are traveling and they're traveling through these planes and it's like, really rough there's a big windstorm and Safira can't fly up there because she's getting pushed around everywhere and they finally are out of the storm and they're somewhere safe yeah that didn't happen in the movie <laughs> like at all there was like no windstorms at all right no there was like nothing no. it was just it was summertime and the living was easy it was perfect weather <laughs> So they reach the next town and it's abnormally quiet. It turns out this is because everyone was killed by all the Urgles. And there were still a couple of Urgles left and they started to attack them. Aragon. Yep. Mm-hmm. Felt <laughs> 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 the power like he's never felt before. He shot an arrow, said a magic word, and then he felt super weak afterwards. Oh, the arrow, it did magic and killed them all. But he felt super, super weak after. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that does not happen in the movie. Um, it not not exactly. Oh, I mean, it okay. it kind of does, but I, f- I felt like they skipped a town in the movie. I was going to say I the, a lot of their travels are very condensed in the movie. It's yeah. kind of like they just squished it into a quick thing. He. He, there were there was a town there was urgles there yeah he kind of got it attacked and then he did shoot magic arrow yeah but it wasn't like didn't at this point in the book too didn't brahm because brahm said the fire word and then uh aragon aragon uh then said <laughs> thank you uh then said um like oh you're using magic I want to know, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, the next night, he's then like, okay, here's fire. And, like, tells him the word for fire. That's yeah, what I, thought. I think that's right. I thought so, because in the movie it was, he saw Brom do it, because Brom kind of did it under his breath to make the fire. Mm-hmm. And Aragon didn't, like, stop him and talk to him about it. But then in the next scene was like, Brzinger <laughs> and knew exactly what to do and like wasn't worried that he was gonna die. <laughs> Are you laughing at how I just said it? How would you say it? Brzinger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you said Brzinger. <laughs> That's how I said it the whole time I read it. I am literally like, have you guys seen the, uh, for me, cause it's only on like reels that I watch, but probably Allie TikTok, the, uh, 
<laughs> the one where it's the girl reading like a fantasy book and she like goes through names and it's and then they traveled to Ashvara. <laughs> That's legit <laughs> me. There are many times in this book that I would skip over and be like, cool, it started with a G. Great. Next. <laughs> I have done that in this in this book series. Um, I gotta say, I was was really impressed about the uh, the names <laughs> and the whole language because there were times I was just like, one, I could not come up with anything even remotely yeah. close to that. I can't come up with names to save my life. Yep. And John Doe. <laughs> <laughs> and two, I was just like, I can't even pronounce these. <laughs> there was like a paragraph at the end. That Aragon says And I literally like I read the first two words And was like oh this whole thing is gonna be in this I can't I do not have time <laughs> To read this <laughs> I don't even know what the hell you say So <laughs> goodbye <laughs> Yeah that's why I keep saying the next town Instead of what actually the <laughs> town is Because I don't know how to say any of them <laughs> So Did he feel super weak after he did magic? No yeah, he did. Cause he uh, in the movie. In the movie, he passed out. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yep. Safira carried Brom um, because an Urgul got his arm pretty bad, and Aragon was shocked that he was able to do magic. They got somewhere safe to talk and rest, and uh, Brom had magic too, but it wasn't as powerful because he's not a writer, and so. Magic uses energy like any other task you do. So some spells can actually kill you because it uses so much energy and they practiced by levitating a rock in their hand. And that felt very Yoda and Luke. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hell yeah. Are you going to get on his back too? <laughs> do a front flip over that log. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then they continued practicing fighting, and they're just resting up. So funny enough, the movie, I feel like one, they only had one practice fight session. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so glad, because I didn't bring this up. I don't think I brought it up yet. The thing that made me upset in that practice scene, too, is, like, in the book... No, I did say this. Or was that just when we were talking? Why don't you say it so we know what you're talking about? (laughs) (laughs) In the book, uh... in the book, their first spar thing, Aragon is like, no, I haven't done this. Like, this isn't familiar to me. I'm going to be horrible at this. And then he gets better and better. In the movie, he's like, oh, I do this all the time with Warren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, OK. And then it's just that one scene. But sorry, continue. <laughs> um, Got to remember what I was saying. Um, yeah, they only had one, one, one sparring scene in the movie and uh they did not practice uh levitating a, fro- a floating rock they he asked about in the movie he asked about like what's the ancient word for uh uh tree and then what's the ancient word for tree branch and like <laughs> how do you say you know asked about like a couple <laughs> why does he need to know the ancient word for tree branch what is he gonna do well, <laughs> well he, he winds up using it later in the movie but <laughs> He uses those tree branches. <laughs> I thought it was funny because it's like, that's not anything he, they talk, no magic spell in the no. book. Nope. All right. So that the next town, they get their provisions and it's heavily guarded. They have like archers all around and everything like that. And so after they got what they needed, Brom told him he can use magic to look into people's minds to know their true intentions. And they can also block others from his mind, but it's really, really hard. Uh, And then Safira let him know that she's pissed. She's like, you're a dragon rider. Why aren't you riding me? And so they agreed to start riding every other day and uh, kept practicing swords and all that. Oh, now they practice with swords because they put magic on the sword so they won't cut each other. Honestly, that would have been kind of cool to see in the movie. But again, a lot of that stuff, I don't think any of that happened. In the movie. No, no, none of that happened. But what I was going to say was at this part, 
I imagine lightsabers basically. I was like, yeah. <laughs> because they said one of them was red. So it's like it's like a Sith lightsaber. <laughs> okay. We're bringing all sorts of fandoms into this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so Aragon rode Saphira and it was amazing. He's like, oh my gosh, why haven't I been doing this forever? And uh, then he found like this talisman or something. He found something of the Razox and I don't remember what it was. What was it? Oh, it was a, um, a vial with uh, yeah. The oil. Uh, the oil in it. Wait, isn't that's that right. way later with Murtog? No, that's because it starts out with the, um, they're trying to find out where the, oh, the shipment yeah. of that oil yep. came from. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. And then, um, they agree they need to be more careful going into town, so they have code names now, and, uh, yep, that's fine. You use the stones also as magic to shoot and get food, which is kind of cool. I think I missed when you talked about this. But uh, I wanted to say, or maybe you skipped it. Did you talk about how Ergon got his name? Or who he's named after? I know, I took a, I know you took a note of it, but I don't remember you talking about it in the podcast. You know why? Because <laughs> it was that bit where you guys were talking and I said, oh, oh. they said what I said. Okay. <laughs> Well, so Aragon is named after this like super famous dragon rider, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. one of the first. Yeah, the first the dragon first. rider. This is not mentioned in the movie. Nope, not at all. Yeah, I don't know why I wanted to bring it up now, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you wanted to bring it up. Yeah. So they're the next town now, and they're trying to get information on the Razax and about like where all these ships are coming and they find out or they find out that ships are getting captured or something like that or transporting oil like we said and so they're trying to get information on all that none of that happens okay. in the movie nope That's what I thought. okay so i think in the same town they find someone named how did you say it jihad jihad how'd you say it yeah that's how i said it too. jihad 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 who brahm knew i did it again Typo? Oh, yeah, it's I, four it's letters. Over. I kept doing Bram. 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 Bram and him got caught. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to self-edit because I don't need all this crap. Okay, so Bram had Aragorn. Aragorn. Gosh. <laughs> you were doing so good. I was doing so good. Leave the house. And so they could talk in private. And Aragorn did, like, some magic. So he overheard their conversation. And, um... And then he went and rode Saphira for a bit. That does not happen. None of that. <laughs> Giod is not a character in the movie. Come on, the horses don't even have names in the movie. <laughs> okay, so Aragon can't read, and this is a this is a issue. Did I say it right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I was like, why are you laughing? I was just laughing at Eric. Oh, <laughs> that's so mean. <laughs> So he can't read. This is the issue because they need to go through all these scrolls and books to find information. So uh, then he starts talking to Brahm about like projecting images. And well, Brahm told him it only works if he's seen it before. So kind of like a dream, but you have to have seen it before and it takes a bunch of energy. So. Because what do they call it in the... Book? It's scrying, scrying. And I loved that because me throwing in another fandom. But one of my favorite shows that I've watched is Charmed. And in Charmed, they scry all the time. And they called it that. And I didn't realize that was like a magic word. I just kind of thought that was a word that Charmed made up for what they were doing. So then when it got brought up in this, I was like, oh, my gosh, I've seen them do it in Charmed. <laughs> Well, there was no scrying in the movie, was there? Nope. Did I say it wrong? <laughs> Me, I only care about Charles. Yeah, you, said, you said it right. <laughs> oh, okay. She keeps <laughs> laughing over here, and I'm, like, getting all self-conscious. No, I was laughing because <laughs> I, I jump in to talk, but to only talk about Charles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not do your job about the book or the movie. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about every other fandom. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... The next day, Aragon, yep, 
walked around and looked at the shop that he was in, this little shop, and there was a werecat there, and it spoke to him, and... Oh. I guess I should say, with the scrying thing in the movie, instead of scrying, what happened was Aragon just kept having dreams of Arya. Like, there were way more dreams of Arya, and Arya kept talking to him. Like, Aragon, come help. <laughs> and I was like, okay. You're way ahead. He hasn't even done any of that yet. Well, it's happened in the movie <laughs> like three times already. <laughs> so there's this woman there named Angela and she let him know that this cat has only spoken to three other people before. And she offered to read him his fortune and um, with dragon bones. So it tells the truth. And she said the only other person that said yes was someone and it was his mother's name. Don't remember what it was. So I don't recall. Okay. It starts with an S. Yes, it does. That's the name of the cat. Yeah, the, I think the mom starts with an S too. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Serena. I'm not telling them. I know him. And he's gonna marry someone. Rich? No, someone famous. He's gonna marry someone. <laughs> well, I, it's not rich. It's like well, not wealthy, like royal. He's gonna marry someone royal with royalty. He, someone he loves, is gonna die, and someone in his family is gonna betray him. Uh, None of those get answered. It must have been someone he, he assumed family. I guess he no. thought it was uh, his cousin. Oh uh, yeah. But maybe it was someone close to him is what it was. Yeah, none of these get answered in this book. So one does. Oh, yeah. That one does. I always forget the thing that happens to my favorite character. Okay. This does not happen in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Brom taught him how to read. And this is the first time he has the uh, visions. Dreams. Of a woman crying. Okay, <laughs> so now there's, they go on a mission to go through all these records. The werecat's there. He warns them that guards are coming. And they get all the information they need, and they leave, and they figure out where these Razaks are hiding. Werecat's not in the movie. Aragon doesn't learn how to read. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Aragon doesn't know how to read at all in the movie. <laughs> well, we don't know that. He might know how to read, but we don't know that. <laughs> Because they don't address it. Uh, nope. <laughs> okay. So they all went on their way and. Uh, Aragon was asking Brom more questions to learn about his past. And then. He went off with Safira and he ended up like being dumb and jumping places and he fell and broke his wrist and he sees a fresh Urgo footprint and they went back to Brom to let him know and they go off. They're running because they hear all the horns and then the Urgos come attack him and they he finds out that they know who he is. Um, and they want to take him to their leader <laughs> like an alien. <laughs> Um, but he did a spell to knock them all out, but that also made him pass out because it was too much. None of that happens. <laughs> Allie just gets to talk a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will start talking soon. You're yeah. going to tell your own story. <laughs> tell your own story. Because you guys are going to say what happens in the movie, and it is like <laughs> its own that's, thing. That's true. <laughs> so, <sighs> he, Aragorn woke up, and he's tried to see Safira or anything, and he... Oh, he's not attacked yet. Just kidding. Aragorn, <laughs> Aragorn woke up, and he's practiced scrying, and he saw Brahm and Safira. He knew they were okay. He checked on Rowan. I spelled the name wrong. And <laughs> they tried to see the lady that he dreamed about, and it worked, but she saw him too. And Brahm came back back pissed because he uh, screwed everything up by not killing these Urgles. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> they got to a new city. They split up, wandered around. Uh, wandered. <laughs> wandered around. And uh, tried to figure out with the Razaks and Brom found out some information. 
and then they just kept wandering and Aragon ran into some slavers and it made him so angry. He just kept going. He found went to a cathedral and all of a sudden the Razak come in and they attack and they're accompanied by soldiers. They chase them out of town and they barely make it. They're continuing to go on their way and the Razak end up capturing them. That does not happen. Okay. None of that. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll, it's just a mess now because arrows are starting to get shot everywhere and everything like this. I thought you were meaning the book and movie. I mean, it's true, that too. But no, <laughs> everywhere. And then Brom gets stabbed and it's just like the, the craziness. But they end up waking up and this new guy named Murtaugh is there with them. How do you say his name? I say Murtaugh. Murtog. Murtog That's how I said it. is there with them and uh, they work together and they're trying to heal Brom because he was stabbed like right in the chest uh, but they only can heal external wounds so they're not sure if it's going to work but they got to keep going. Brom does not die here. <laughs> uh, this is when it gets to the point where I'm like, do we talk about it here or when it happens in the movie? Or I guess we could talk about it here. You yeah, want? that's fine. Okay. <laughs> what? Do you want to take it away, Earl? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't confuse. It's don't, burn. It's God don't confuse damn it. I did conf- it again. <laughs> don't confuse them. <laughs> You're going to confuse people. <laughs> My name's not Earn. <laughs> it's not. And I always screw up Earn. <laughs> I always say Earl. <laughs> My name is Earl. <laughs> is that why? <laughs> I think so. It is Earl. Hey, Earl. How are you? Take um, it away. Take it away, Earl. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so in the movie, they... Oh, my gosh. It is just... It is <laughs> so confusing how it happens in the movie because, like, everything happens at once. Yeah, because, like... um. They end up going, aren't they at Galbatorix's castle? They're in Gilead. Oh, Gilead? Yes. Except Gilead. for, is it pronounced that? Because I know Gilead is the town it in Handmaid's be. Town. It might be Gilead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's how I read it. I was like, Gilead. I, um, I pronounced it Gilead. <laughs> <laughs> Gilead. <laughs> um, but, uh, so they're there in this castle because Aragon has now had many dreams about uh, Arya, and it's like, I need to go save her. She's trapped in this dungeon, so he wants to go and save her, and he gets her, but then they're running away, and then because of the attack, Brom this whole time has been like, no, we're not going to go save her. That's not the right thing to do. We need to be going to this town instead, and then Brom does the like heroic thing and shows up to save them because all hell's breaking loose and then he gets a knife thrown at him and then he tells Aragon how to kill a shade that's pretty much it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I know this because uh Brom was my favorite character how do you kill Scar I say that as a literally kill Scar in the Lion King but <laughs> <laughs> In the book, Brahm has not died yet. He is having some seizures, though. He's freaking out. And uh, he calls Aragon over and, like, cleans off his arm. And he shows him that he was a dragon rider, too. He has the dragon mark. And he, we learned some backstory about him, that his dragon died in battle. And her name was Safira too. And um, he was a very famous dragon rider. And then he dies and they bury him in all these rocks and Sephira melted it, it, turning into diamonds. Um, And he had another dream of this girl in the cell, but she's bleeding this time. That's. uh, Yeah, like 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 we said, Brom dies differently in the movie. Um, They do bury him and and Sephira does at least turn it into like a. Um, 
like a really nice tomb for him. <laughs> but he is uh, <laughs> it's revealed way differently that he used to be a dragon rider in the movie. <laughs> Aragorn just kind of forces it out of him <laughs> and like <laughs> forces his uh, glove off. And it's revealed that he's he's Mark is there. He's like, ah, you lied to me. <laughs> That's pretty. And then he turns into a little baby and is like, how dare you lie to me? I was like, dude, <laughs> you've got bigger problems than bro. <laughs> Not telling you he's a writer or whatever. <laughs> so Safira and Aragon are chatting and uh, he finds out that Sh- Brom shared a lot more with her telepathically than he ever told Aragon. 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 <laughs> this book is going to kill me. Um, <laughs> so they agreed. Okay, we got to take this murtag along <laughs> with us. That's what we agreed is called. We looked at the pronunciation page in the book, and apparently his name is Murtag, not Murtag. I like Murtag better. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds better. Poor Murtag. You imagine. No wonder he. <laughs> no wonder his backstory is horrible. <laughs> no wonder his dad hates him. <laughs> That's a terrible name. So they take him along with them and they practice battling together still. And, um, But he wants to part ways because where they're trying to go, he's like, I'm never going to go there. And they're like, let's just sleep on it. We'll see. And they're woken up by Urgles. And he's er, gone, he's smashed in the head, knocked out. <laughs> in the movie it's almost like he's all gung-ho Mur- Murtag is all gung-ho <laughs> about going where they're supposed to go he's just like you want to go there sure well I'll, t- I'll take you there I know his mountains really well let's just go <laughs> so, like uh, one of his cores is, an, is a character in the book mm-hmm. is that he refuses to go to this place because he's just like, I, I, I can't go there. I can't. I can't. I will not go there. Mm-hmm. And the movie is just completely just throws it out the window and is just like, yeah, you want to go? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, he wakes up in a dungeon and he's having trouble remembering things. He can't communicate with Safira, and like they keep bringing him food and water. He keeps eating it. So as he's in this dungeon, he sees an elf and he's like, oh, my gosh, that's who I've been dreaming about. And. He also sees a shade, which is a super dark, powerful creature. And he realizes the f- food and water is drugging him, so he stops eating and drinking it. And the shade comes to talk to him and he has to pretend he's still on these drugs. Mm -hmm. And the shade wanted to know his actual like dragon name, like his rider name, his name that he rarely uses because it will help like control him. Yeah, that's not even a thing in the movie. The whole dragon riders have their real name and their name. Yeah. And it's it's is his real name, Brom. No, Damn. (laughs) It? No, it's I, I can't remember. It's oh. in the ancient language. Oh, <laughs> everyone. Gross. Yeah, like every, everyone is. I think it's everyone. I don't think it's just the dragon riders, but they all have like a true oh. their true name. And if you know someone's true name, you can control them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. OK. And that's just completely just not even addressed in the movie. Nope. nope. And. Aragon is not ever a prisoner in the castle, right? No, not in the movie. Yeah. Um, and the uh, the elf that he's looking for is also like she's unconscious in the book. Yes, but she's wide she's awake. Completely wide awake yep. during the, like, yep. the entire movie. Yep. Yep. So Aragon gets his magic back and he breaks free, and Murtag shows up and helps him escape. Um, but he's like, I'm not going to leave till I go get this elf. So he told Murtag to go because, uh, the shade wants Aragon alive, but he doesn't really care about Murtag. So Aragon goes and finds him, calls Safira. They battle the shade and they destroy him, they think. And on their way out, her wings get pierced and all this sort of stuff. But they save the elf and 
the two guys are out of there. Yeah, like none of that happens in the movie. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Noticing a pattern here. <laughs> so Aragon healed Saphira best he could, and they continued on their way, and they noticed uh, the elf had been totally, like, really badly tortured. Yeah, and the elf was tortured, and he healed her as best he could. Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, that did not happen in the movie. Yeah, the movie pretty much doesn't show, like, I don't know if it was just because of her rating reasons, but it doesn't look like the oh, elf was tortured at all. Be. That might but be. But that, that's very well a possibility. Oh, uh, that's a good point. Okay. Yeah, because she was uh, poisoned. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> didn't she have like didn't she have like black marks on her face yeah she had like she yeah. had black marks appear like on her on her upper chest That's and like her thought. into her neck i think yeah um, but then Murtag just didn't he pour something in her mouth i don't remember i walked out of the room i think oh. <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure Murtag is the one who knows the like antidote and gives it to her <laughs> the one thing he does in the movie <laughs> Okay, so, um, so they had to go through the desert to get out of the mainlands, and Murtaugh was getting nervous because he was like, how are we going to drink in the desert? And Aragon figured out a way to use magic to pull water from the grounds. The grounds. Ground. <laughs> the grounds. <laughs> Groundskeeper. <Yes. laughs> no desert in the movie. No. No. In the desert, they uh, come up with a new way to carry the elf on Saphira's belly because she is still knocked out. And Saphira really likes the heat and Aragon all sleepily is like, we'll we'll come back here someday. Oh, I guess the main difference is that the elf is not knocked out. <laughs> no, she's conscious they, like the entire time. Yeah. Do they go to the desert? Well, we already said there was no desert. Yeah. So they're not in the desert or on their way to the desert and she's awake. Yes, we said the desert part before. <laughs> That's why I didn't say that oh. one. But yes, the <laughs> you can't confuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> OK, it's midnight. Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Bree goes to bed at 730. <laughs> OK, so. Aragon decides he needs to get in this elf's head because she's been out for a week. And at first she resists, but then she lets him look at all her memories and thoughts. And we learn that her name is Arya and she's been poisoned and uh, shares where the antidote is and how to get there. And a little while later, Murtaugh uh, and Aragon got into an ego fight and mm -hmm. Sephira basically had to stop them. And we learn that Murtaugh has been on the run just simply because he's alive. I just have to say, whenever I hear Arya, I just think of Arya Stark. So, like, this whole entire time, oh. I just think of, what do they call her? The, the She's part of the known faces, but what is she called? Why can't I think of what she's called? I don't know. So that's all. That was also all I kept picturing. I was like, oh, I love you're such a good fighter. <laughs> Another fandom and no talk <laughs> of if that happened or not in our <laughs> movie. I was going to let Justin take over uh, after I, I said that. Yawn. And he was yawning <laughs> and then you jumped in. None of that happened. <laughs> okay. God, Justin, get me in trouble. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I wonder how many... Someone's got to tell us how many fandoms we've brought into this. I think four. Oh, I'm counting like six. Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Star Wars. Oh, I talked about Hannity Tale. Charmed. Game of Thrones. Charmed. I forgot about Charmed. Was that six? Six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see? I told you. Like six. Right. <laughs> Should we bring up Twilight? <laughs> there it's <Yeah>. seven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted me to be wrong. <laughs> So they come upon a bunch of horse riders and they find out they're slavers. So they're trying to find people to sell. And 
Aragon's plan is to scare them and let them run away. But if they don't run, then they'll kill whoever stays to fight back. Um, throughout the, all the kerfuffle, because <laughs> Safira comes down and scares them, their leader was knocked out, and Murtog takes his chance and just kills him. And Aragon is pissed. So they get to some planes and Murtog's like, no, I don't know. I can't see a way out of here. I'm not, I don't think I can, we should do this. And Aragon was like, no, we got it here. Take Arya. I'll go on Safira. We'll look around. It'll be fine. They rode too high. Aragon passed out. Um, they continued on their way anyways, and there was no exit. Murtaugh's pissed, and we find out that he is one of the sons of the big bad guys. Firstborn. Mm-hmm. I can't remember who says it in the movie, but in the movie, someone just randomly says that he's the kid of the Forsworn. Yeah, it's one of the... Uh, um characters when they get to where they're supposed to where they're trying to go okay just kind of blurts it out it's just it's it's a quick thing yeah and a and little side note i don't think there's a single moment in the movie where murtaugh is actually pissed no <laughs> it's true no uh they also so garrett headland is one of my favorite actors i love him so much and so like when i saw his name in the credits at the start of the movie i was like oh i cannot wait for this and then he was like barely in it but so I love Murtog because he's Murtog, but yes, you're right. He's not <laughs> pissed at all. <laughs> um, also in the movie, is it ever said whose child he is? I don't think so. I don't remember that happening. And that's kind of key to. It is said, I think, but it's it. It's not made. It known happens why it's so important. quick and it just kind of glossed over. Okay. okay, so we find out that Brom killed Murtaugh's father and that's the sword that Aragon has and it sliced Murtaugh really bad in the back when he was like three years old. Mm-hmm. And they get to this waterfall lake thing and Aragon believes this is where Arya told them to go, but now they're trapped and a bunch of Urgles are coming and there's a giant battle that breaks out and they're trying to figure out where to go. And Sophia is like, this isn't where she I saw in your mind when you were in her mind. This is where we're supposed to go. And they went to the right location. And uh, but Aragon is like starting to drown. And then he's pulled out by a dwarf. That does not happen. <laughs> that doesn't. No, none of that. happened. <laughs> um, they kind of. They get to a waterfall in the movie, and then they just... Come. I don't even remember the waterfall. <laughs> it happened really quick. <laughs> I was going to say, is that when they were in the little, like, cave thing at the top of the... I think so. And that, I think so. I was going to say at the top of the waterfall, but that would be really <laughs> stupid where, of me. Where was the waterfall? Oh, you know, at the top of the waterfall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So when they're with all these dwarfs, they Aragon is having his memory searched and it's like super painful and they're doing this to make sure he's not a bad threat. But Murtaugh will not let them look through his memories. And so he's locked to his room. They go about it in a different fashion. Um, that's when they reveal about Murtaugh, mm. Tog's father. And then they lock him away because of it. (laughs) (laughs) How dare you? (laughs) They do the exact thing. Like the exact thing he's worried about in the book. They do it in the movie. (laughs) That's actually kind of hilarious. (laughs) It is kind of funny. (laughs) Oh, poor guy. Okay. The next day, Aragon is escorted through the dwarf underground village kingdom. And it's gorgeous. And people are clapping. They're so happy for him. He's a writer. It's so great. And Murtaugh continues to deny access to his memories. And Aragorn must go down and do some training to show how much he's learned from Brom. 
Um, and Saphir and him got to hang out too. So they chatted a bit and he's like, I just don't feel like I should be the dragon rider. I don't know why. I'm just a farm boy. Yeah, none of that happens in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is such an easy one for yeah. us. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it is. So he woke up and the werecat is there. He follows it and it's brought him to Angela, who uh, has been there for a month, apparently. And she's super smart. She knows everything that's going on. She's always in the center of all the know-hows. I thought you were going to say center of attention. No. <laughs> <laughs> That does not happen because Angela and the weird cat are not a thing. No, Angela's in the movie, but oh. she's got only uh, she only does this the um, the dragon bone reading. Mm -hmm. Wow, I don't remember that. Oh yeah, <laughs> At the very yeah. Beginning. She's in the movie, but the uh, the cat the weird cat's not. Okay. And she also looks like she's like I don't know. I pictured her being an older woman, like an older. Oh, oh, interesting. That's how I pictured that her. That is interesting because I definitely pictured a young chick. I did too. Oh, okay. I pictured her in her like 50s or 60s. Oh, okay. I can see that. Um, And she looked like she was in her like 30s. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I pictured. Probably because I watched the movie even though I totally forgot that she was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I got met with the Dwarf King and they chatted about all his adventures and uh, was he the one who gave uh, oh, him a ring? Brahms ring? Or where did he get Brahms ring from? Funny. Justin just heard that. I was going to say you guys just heard that, but you don't have headphones. <laughs> that was my phone. Um, no, the the leader of the Ajahad. Ajahad gives him Brahms ring, right? Or is it Dwarf Queen? Queen? King? Um, I thought it was Ajahad. Because he... Gave it to Aragorn? Yeah. Because he wants Aragorn to take it to the elves to, like, show that. Yeah, I think... So... Uh, I thought that Brom gave it to him originally, and then he was like, use this, and they'll, you know, if... if use this as, like, collateral... Oh, oh! Is that what happened? Yeah, but then I think he gives and then it he to goes to give it to Ajahad the king. And Ajahad's, Ajahad's like, like, "No, you need to hang on to this. this. You need it for the elves." That's yeah. what it was. Yes. Yep. I almost was like, "Excuse you." I actually think in the movie he gives him the ring, but then once you I don't said think it, the ring's like, in oh, the movie. Right. Well, no, I think it's it not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not a thing. No. Yep. On his way down to the training grounds, he is met by a woman and she has a baby and she's like, bless the baby, please. And they do. Does that come back to bite him in the ass? Um, not exactly. All right. They, the, the baby is blessed with like extremely good luck, if I remember correctly. Oh. So this baby has like a naturally, like unnatural things happen to it. Oh, in a, in a lucky sense. <laughs> um, okay, if well, I remember good. correctly. So it's like when I read it and he did the blessing, I was like, oh, my gosh, Brom told you <laughs> to basically not do this. And you're doing it. it was yeah. very Wait, no, it wasn't Brom. It was Aja. Uh, no, it was no, Brom. Brom, Brom warned him about like, you got to be careful with. How you oh, word with things. how you word things, yes. In the ancient language. Yes. Yeah. And here he goes, just like. Here he goes, like, blessing a baby. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> great. This kid is like, still got his whole entire life ahead of him. And you're like, do 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 yeah, let's do it. He was put in a very awkward situation, though. How you'd be like, nah. No. <laughs> when all these people watch. <laughs> Bless my baby. Nah, man. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. That baby don't need blessed. <laughs> that baby. That baby. That baby not a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That does not happen in the movie. Oh, yeah. There's no baby. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So. He's brought to the training grounds. And the twins who, like, just don't like him. They were the ones who, they didn't want him there in the first place. They're the ones who went through his memory and all this sort of stuff. They come down to practice, like, the magic with him. And they keep trying to make him fail. But Saphir is there to make sure he doesn't. 
And then Arya comes down and shoos them away. And she battles him with the sword and she wins. But she's like, congratulations, you pass. And um, they spoke about a ta her tattoo because it had the same symbol that Brom's ring had. And uh, that's why I thought that Brom was her dad for mm. a minute. But then I also realized she's an elf and <laughs> yes. he's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so then they they met up with Murtog again, and he's pretty chill. He's like, yeah, I'd be in my room anyways. I like this living situation. Yeah. Yeah, none of that happens in the movie. No. <laughs> um, yeah, none of that happens in the movie. Yeah, you see, at some point, you see Murtog in his uh, jail cell, but he's actually, like, trying to escape and is, like, frantically <laughs> freaking out because... <laughs> There's, like, fighting and stuff going on. <laughs> Pretty much, like, from the moment they entered the Varden, uh, which is where they were trying to go, it, it, it's pretty much like, oh, we're here. And they immediately, it's like, oh, we're fighting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like, anything in between yeah. is gone. Yeah. Good point. Good point. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. Speaking of fighting, Aragorn's woken up because he finds out they're under attack. And... Okay, so they're under attack, and they come and wake everyone up. They come up with a plan and everything, and uh, Aragon and Saphira have armor now, and it's all, they're getting ready. They're going to do it. Does she get armor in the movie? I don't yes. remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, she okay. does get armor in the movie. Mm -hmm. At least that happened. That did happen. And uh, Aragon got armor, too. Yes. Good. <laughs> Could you happened. imagine? Not Aragon. Only the dragon. <laughs> only the dragon. The big creature needs armor. You're you're not important. So the battle begins and Saphira at some point gets hurt by her armors, like squishing her. And so Arya is trying to get it off her and help her. And the <laughs> shade comes back and Aragon went and fought him. And eventually Saphira busts in. And blows fire, which is a big deal because she's. Well, this is a big deal. She's blowing fire because she's all, she's been too little to blow fire, and now all of a sudden she can blow it, and she blows fire, and that gives <laughs> all of a sudden she can blow it. <laughs> she can blow it, and Aragon is able to stab the shade in the heart and kill it. I feel like in the movie, the second that she can blow fire, she just blows fire, and that's all she's doing for the rest of the fight. Yeah, pretty much the 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 movie. It, it's I don't know, like in the book, did you guys kind of portray it as like they were under they were in a tunnel? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Underground. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. So um, the movie, the entire thing takes place ab above ground. Good point. I didn't even. Think and about that. the entire fight with the shade is like an aerial battle. Oh, I did oh, not yeah. read that. In, really? In, in the movie. In the movie, oh, the oh entire yeah. yeah, the entire fight with the shade is an <laughs> aerial. Like, Whoa! I did not read this proper. No, 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 no. <laughs> the book, it was not. It was. Okay. It was definitely not an aerial fight in the book, but in the movie, the entire thing was like an aerial battle. Okay, I'm with you now. <laughs> yeah. Major difference. Yes. Oh yeah, big time. And so that ends with. Aragon is in a dream and there's like this white figure and he's telling him he did great and he needs to find Arya and the elves and he wakes up and he found out what happened and he's so proud of Saphira he's, he's like you blew fire I'm so proud of you and then he ends with him remembering the white figure in his dream bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <Go ahead>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like none of that happens in the movie <laughs> <laughs> there's no white figure. There's no dream. There's no. I don't even think he congratulates her for breathing fire. No. Well, doesn't he have to heal her? Yeah. Yeah. So then he heals her now. Whereas in the book, he's done it a few other times when her wings have gotten pierced. But yeah, she freaking almost dies. Like, what is up with that? Yeah. In the movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She did not almost die in the book. No, a little bit dramatic in the movie. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> well, that was it. You guys got anything else that the movie screwed up? Start to finish. <laughs> <laughs> One of the fun facts that I was 
didn't choose was that it said there are well over 50 differences from the book <laughs> to the movie. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> We probably didn't get them all. I've never had uh, IMDb trivia be about how many differences there are. And I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> but honestly, yeah. yeah I feel like we actually lot. covered quite oh, a we bit. Did. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's. So IMDb cast 56 people for this movie. And Ed Spellers? Sure. <laughs> Played Eric. Spielers, Spielers, Spellers. Aww. Played Aragon. I recast. And I recast Timothy Chalamet. Mm. Dune? Yes. Ah. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah? Yeah. Uh -huh. I can see that. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I I literally today I just looked up uh ac young actors and he I had to scroll a little bit and at first I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna be able to recast. And then I saw him and I was like, ah, you, you are my Aragon. I can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wouldn't have been the right age for when the movie came out, but I'll give it to you anyways. Aragon. Well, he would have been the book's right age. Is that how old oh, he Oh, yeah. Was? The, the book, uh, the book, uh, that was one of the other differences, too, I forgot about, was the uh, the movie said he was 17. The uh -huh. book, he was 15. There you go. Okay. Yeah. See, he okay. would have been perfect. Okay. <laughs> Jeremy Irons is Brom. Perfect. Perfection. The best. Yeah, I like it. I think he did a pretty good job. Um, I would have taken uh, Liam Neeson. Would have been <gasps> a personal choice, too. Oh, my gosh. I would have been perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love me some Liam Neeson, too. But Jeremy Irons, you cannot go wrong with. Sienna Gil Gilroy? Mm -hmm. Played Aria. Oh, wait. No. Gilory. Gilory. I recast. Okay. And I recast Saoirse Ronan, but if we dyed her hair black. Do you guys know who Saoirse Ronan is? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Okay. But with black hair. How tall is she? <laughs> <laughs> Details. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> IMDb will tell you. Google. <laughs> hey. Okay, so with Arya, I kind of pictured, I know it's not how she was described at all, but... Uh, I don't even know. You might be able to help me. Anime. And it's like... I don't know if it's a specific anime or what, but it's like just like really like like white flowy blonde-ish hair and like just like like a like looks like a prince it's probably from all those in you yasha <laughs> it's probably from all those those you know that tiktok filter where it changed you to anime i probably saw it there a bunch but i don't know that's who i had pictured and i know she was described with black hair and not like that at all but that's who i pictured <laughs> oh she might be thinking of princess mononoke too i think so possibly look it up I like that you're trying to recast and you're only looking up anime characters. <laughs> I didn't recast her. I just oh. that's, who I, that's who I... That's who you pictured. That's who I envisioned. I didn't recast her. Wait, are you talking about Sailor Moon? No. Okay, good. I was about to be very disappointed in you. Hey, look, you're getting us to mention like five other... <laughs> <laughs> five more fandoms. <laughs> like she didn't have the big eyes. She wasn't... Oh, one of the things that I eyes. didn't say in this is in the movie, Galbatorix got shown a lot. Yes. And in the book, he's like obviously mentioned, but he's never someone that you encounter. Mm -hmm. I also love the actor that played Galbatorix. I know. I love John <laughs> I know, Malkovich. So funny. <laughs> All right. We can go to the next one. Okay. All right. Well, John Malkovich, Galbatorix. Yeah, we love it. Are you recasting? No. Oh, okay. I, I was thinking, I was like, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else, but. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, he was good. Ah, Garrett Hedlund, Murtog. I recast him. <gasps> I love that actor. I love him, but he wasn't who I envisioned. Now, I'm going to blame me listening to an audiobook for this one because the audiobook reader. Uh, read him with a Scottish accent. <laughs> so I went into the movie wanting him to be Scottish. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay, fair enough. 
I recast Richard Madden from Game of Thrones. He's uh, oh, I love him. He's what's his name? Uh, Stark. Yes, he's the older brother. Uh, Why can't I think John Stark? No, no, that's Jon Snow. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. He so has I the recast Red Wedding. Okay. He's hot as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I almost didn't say the one that I absolutely have to recast. Okay. And then we got Rachel Weiss as Safira. I recast Safira because I felt like Rachel Weiss did her too hoity toity. Like I said, I chose Helena Bonham Carter. Of course you should. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think she could have the like spunk that I wanted Safira to have. And yeah. like, yeah. Because Sapphira also has to be regal, but I feel like Rachel did the regal thing the whole time. And that was it. Mm hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. I feel like Helena could get that range where she could get the like regal and regal, but spunky. And exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so, like, it was funny because I almost like when that thought first came into my mind, I was like, no, you can't recast her as Helena. But then as I continued, reading the book i was like oh no it's helena like that's who's in my head it's there <laughs> for the audiobook <laughs> yeah oh. the reader uh read safira like in a dragon voice so like <laughs> aragorn what are you doing and like so like <laughs> so just watching the movie and seeing hearing a female voice i was like oh <laughs> it's kind of nice it makes sense oh but it's not yelling what? at me <laughs> <laughs> it was like Okay. <laughs> so I was fine with her, but I mean, I had mean dragon voice to, <laughs> to, to change. Uh, and then we've got Joss Stone as Angela. I recast her. Okay. Now I know she was only in it for a second, but so much so that I forgot she was even in it. <laughs> I recast Emily Blunt from back in ah. 2006. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is is the theme of the book and the movie the same? The theme? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I dragon think, riders. I think dragons. They, yeah. yeah. I would say yes. Yeah, I'd say it's the same. Mm -hmm. I know Justin's answer for this one. Do the characters stay true to the movie? How they written in the books? Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that answer is obvious. <laughs> There's so many differences between the characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, the more we talked about it, the more I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. No, that's... I already knew like that. How like, how Arya is not quick. even remotely a badass yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or Murtog. Or Aragon. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. They're, like, all different. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Which do you prefer, book or movie? Why? A book, obviously. <laughs> Why? Um, it, I feel like it was just, it was, I like the way it's written. I like the, the story behind it. It just, it, it, it's got a better feel for it or to it. Um, and I feel like the movie just really did not do it justice. <laughs> Brie? <laughs> You're just doing this on purpose, aren't you? Well, we had someone who read the book first answer and someone who watched the movie. I chose movie. Oh. <laughs> because the book was just way too slow for me. It actually like one of the reasons it took me forever to read it was because there were more often than not times when I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't go through them just walking through another town. <laughs> Uh, and I do understand why people who read the book and love the book hate the movie. Like it, reading the book, it was obvious. I was like, duh. Like <laughs> I kept texting Allie and I would be like, Allie, I don't understand why I like the movie more, but I like the movie more. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I like the movie. <laughs> Mine was hard. Okay. Because I agree with the, it was very slow at parts, so mm -hmm. it made it, whereas the movie was fast paced. Yeah. But the changes they did in the movie, I didn't like. Yeah. Like, I really liked the battle scene at the end, how it 
mm-hmm. worked out. And I like that their like main thing is to help Arya, and she's awake or she, she's awake in the movie. <laughs> like what? That does no. And so I had a lot of trouble deciding, <laughs> but I think I went movie. <laughs> yes, just because. Yes. <laughs> It was faster paced, but I wanted all the battle and stuff to be the same. So okay. I don't know. I was very, it was hard. I get it. <laughs> get it? I feel really bad. <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> but I, yeah, I just feel, I feel bad. We, we invite you on and we <laughs> Well, I kind of, I kind of forewarned, I didn't tell him that I chose a movie mm-hmm. in our D&D session today. But I did tell him that our theory was that if you watch the movie first, you end up liking the movie mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. There's been a few where it hasn't been the case. Yeah. But that's typically like. Yeah. Because if that's what you're first introduced to. Well, that happened to my brother. He liked the um, he liked the movie more. Uh, yeah. And I was yeah. just like, you didn't read the book. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Like, I totally, totally understand yeah. why people don't like the movie. Mm-hmm. And like. I will say that part of me wanted more clarification from the book about, like I said, with the because sometimes I would be like, whoa, they got to this place and now there's battle going on. But I don't really understand how that started. Mm -hmm. Like, it just kind of felt like everything was like picked up right there. Yeah. But then the book didn't even give me that because it was just a little bit different and obviously not really what was going on. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, whatever. Gotcha. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm a movie girl. <laughs> right. <laughs> and maybe that's why it was so hard for me, because I read it first. So I mm-hmm. wanted the book, mm-hmm. but the book just it the I think it was the walking. Whereas I like I like I mean, I like adventure, mm-hmm. but it, I feel like it just went so long in between things happening. And then when they happened in the book, it was very quick until the end when I was like, this is what I thought the whole, I also think that might be it. I yeah. went into the book thinking one thing, like it was going to be like the end the whole time. And then it wasn't. So I was a little thrown for that. But again, I, I would, I wanted everything that was in the book in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I feel so bad. Why? I don't. <laughs> don't. It's our podcast. <laughs> it's your podcast. You're entitled to your wrong opinion. It's okay. <laughs> hey, right. my opinion's right. But yeah, see, so sometimes there's the one yeah. <laughs> where it's like, man, that's not what I'm choosing, even though that's what I went with. I'm surprised. Did you think I was going to choose book? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Last half of the book, I was like, I'm going to choose the book. But then I just remembered it. It was like, it took me forever to get here. <laughs> <laughs> the movie got me here very quickly. <laughs> they did it wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, that's why it was like, it was hard to choose. Yeah. I totally understand that because mm-hmm. I do get where there's moments in the book where, and it was across all of the books where it just, it really does drag on. Mm-hmm. That's why, because... And can be very difficult to stay interested in uh-huh. it and stay in the book mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because it's just kind of like, okay, this is a bit too much because um, it's just it is really drawn out. Um, and so I do understand where the movie is like, because you're only given so much time, uh-huh. you have to cram as much as you mm-hmm. possibly can in there. Mm-hmm. I just don't agree with what the, the what they chose to cram yeah. in there because yeah. it's yeah. like, Absolutely. and so I totally understand your opinion on like mm-hmm. it, it being a tough decision because it's like, okay, while well, the movie did bring me here closer, get me there faster, it didn't do it. it they didn't do it right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm also glad that you told me this because I told her before I started this book, I was like, great, we're reading this and it's a four book series. I'm going to end up wanting to read this on top of the books that we're reading. Mm -hmm. But then as I was reading this one, I kept I told her, I was like, I don't think I'm going to want to continue like with how this one has been. It's been hard for me. But then it got to the end and I was like, wow, actually, now is when the story is going to pick up. So maybe I will read them. But Mm -hmm. now that you said that, I'm like, screw it. (laughs) 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 
But yeah, that was it. We did it. We did. We did. We did. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. It was so fun. It was. Even though we both chose movies. I know. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but we enjoyed it whilst yes. reading yes. it. Yes. Good. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was. I just wish it was a little bit more quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it was Which good. I totally understand. Mm-hmm. But it was a good book. It was mm-hmm. a good read. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. So next week. Well, first we have our uh, mini sewed on Wednesday. Yeah. What's it going to be? We don't know. I make that joke every single freaking time. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I need to stop. Hey, I stopped wooing. Maybe I can stop this. Yeah, let's see. Okay. And then next week... <gasps> Is it time for Twilight yet? Because I need more rum. Oh, my gosh. No. (laughs) We are going to do Fantastic Mr. Fox. Not very fantastic because it's not real. Actually, it's another one of my loves. I've actually never seen or read it. Surprisingly, as a teacher, you think I would. Eh, I don't don't think it's a book you would read in class. Hmm, Okay. George Clooney's in it. Oh. Mm-hmm. He's a fantastic Mr. Paul. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Justin over there yawning at how boring we are. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, that's one in the freaking morning. Let's not talk about that. I'm so tired. <laughs> We're what? That. I almost stopped at 11. <laughs> I was like, yep, it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> Six hours past when I normally go to bed. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, we better go to bed. I could have been asleep for six hours. Let's do it. And then two hours waking up. Ew. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. I'm glad I'm leaving this job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. All right. See you next time. Unfortunately, not for Twilight. No. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, we would greatly appreciate it if you subscribed, rate, and reviewed. You can also follow us on Facebook at Offscript, Instagram at Offscript Podcast 21, and TikTok at Offscript underscore pod. Shoutouts to Madam Ashen Creations for our adorable logo art. And Adam Daniel for our incredible theme song. And to Creative Cinephile Productions for producing our podcast. See you next time.